and these face huggers are popping out of their little glass cases, scampering around in the water, popping off sides of walls. Huh? Huh? Where's it at? Where's it at? This entire section is insane. Everybody audibly gasped in the theater. <gasps> oh my stars! Oh, that's so unnatural! That was from me. A brand new Alien movie has been in theaters for a little while now, and I freaking loved it. Not everyone did. And that's, that's fine, we all have our opinions. And I said that much in a review that you can absolutely check out if you want. But today's video is diving in further into the film, talking about the pros and cons, and of course, spoiling the crap out of things. So if you haven't seen the movie, definitely don't watch this unless you don't care about spoilers or the Alien franchise at all, because it's been a bit of a mess, to say the least. All right, let's talk about Alien, The Romulus Awakens. Before I begin, if you wouldn't mind just popping that subscribe button, leaving a like and a comment, that would, that would help me out immensely and I would appreciate it. The film fires up with a very familiar setting. Old timey computer equipment. Coming back to life. Much like this franchise. I do not like Alien Coven shit. I thought it was terrible from top to bottom. And I do actually enjoy Prometheus. Warts and all. The movie's got incredibly dumb characters making even dumber choices, but that's taken to an insane degree in Alien Covenant. At least in Prometheus, it had beautiful vistas. It had these cool engineers and a mysterious vibe to it. Covenant goes in such a dumb direction for me that I was just hoping at some point we could get back to basics with a scarier alien film again, isolated onto a ship with a crew. And that's exactly what Romulus gives us. And the film is perfectly fine letting you know Know that right out of the gates because not only do we have that old equipment firing up we also have a very familiar face greeting us at the front door i mean really it's just the front door and some side panels that's left of this thing i'm referring to the ship nostromo yes the very same ship from 1979 which carried ash ripley lambert dallas and the rest of the crew and a xenomorph and that's really the only thing this search party is interested in. Wayland Corporation has retrieved a giant space rock containing the remnants of an alien inside. And this will come back into play later in the film. And yes, Alien Romulus takes place after Alien, but prior to Aliens. But there's going to be references, nods, callbacks to a lot of the different films in the franchise. And this puts some people off for sure because Alien Romulus is another one of those soft reboots. Like the recent Twisters. Like Star Wars The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, Scream. Even if it's tongue in cheek, it's still doing it. These types of movies can really irritate people, especially when they play so heavily into nostalgia, callback jokes, references, things of that nature. Fan service, some people call it. And I am a fan, so I guess I'm okay with the service. As long as it's done in a healthy way. That's not the entire identity of the movie. If the movie can stand on its own without the nods, without the catchphrase callbacks, then the film's still great in my opinion. Even if it is following a tried and true playbook that worked. Here's the harsh reality, fam. A lot of these films that go more than one or two don't really have a lot of creativity left in the bones. So the best we can hope for is a well-made film within that franchise. Look at John Wick. The movies stopped having a plot after the first one. They're just silly nonsense, but it's in its lane. It's all about the action. It's all about the spectacle, and it ups the ante every time. And while there's definitely going to be burnout, I myself am one of the, I guess, few that's like, all right, I think I've seen enough John Wick. It definitely has its fans, and it knows where it belongs. Mission Impossible may never end as long as Tom Cruise can keep taking whatever Scientology pill they come up with to stay youthful and energetic. But this is across the board. Jurassic Park, Fast and the Furious, Despicable Me, Toy Stories going on 5. How much more can we put this damn crew of toys through? You still got a friend in me. You still got a friend in me. It's kind of funny in a sad way, but I and a lot of other critics on YouTube, especially people I know and converse with, were often painted as not liking anything. Or, you know, you're just a hater, you're just doing outrage clickbait videos. And I find that fascinating because of those movies I listed a little bit ago, Jurassic World, The Force Awakens, I actually enjoy those films. And I said so much in reviews. I'm okay with the soft reset. 
because it's taking things back to a place where there was at least a little bit of sense to be made. It wasn't so up its own ass convoluted. It didn't get too far away from what worked initially. And so the reset's fine. The problem is, once you reset, you have to have something interesting to bring to the next film. And that's oftentimes where the Star Wars, the Jurassic Worlds, fall on their face. Because they really have nothing else to bring to the table. But inevitably, whenever I say I like one of these types of movies, people get upset. They're like, oh, you like this crap? It's, it's terrible. It's, it's like, if I went off the comments, I would really have to like nothing in order to have any taste at all. Which... What? I love movies. That's why I started the channel. And I think I'm pretty consistent with my opinions. So that's why a lot of these soft reboots work for me. Not all, but, but most of them at least, they try to emulate what worked before and still give it a little bit of its own identity. And that's where I think Romulus really freaking worked. Almost every idea here hit right with me. So let's go through it to the best of my knowledge. This is not one of those channels where I'm gonna be spitting out a bunch of facts and acting like a professor of film. I've always taken the approach with this channel that listen, there are thousands of movie critics out there. I wanna be a channel that's just talking with you like we were just leaving the movies and trying to recollect the things that happened, the things that wowed me, the things that disappointed me. With that said, let's talk about Alien Romulus. So we have our new female protagonist, and again, not very creative. Alien at one point in time decided we're just gonna do the strong female lead for every movie, so. One through four is Ripley. And then even in AVP, we have the strong female lead. Then in Prometheus, there's another one. And Covenant, and it just goes on and on. And here we are again. The Disney crew. We have a bunch of teenagers, the lead one being Rain. She is stuck on this shithole planet with her robot companion. Android, synthetic, whatever you want to call him. They're known as synthetics in the Alien universe. His name is Andy. And he's not the sharpest tack in the drawer. His computer chip or whatever's going on is really struggling. He's having a hard time even walking. We are joining Rain at probably the highest point of her life, which is a sad thing to say. But she's on her way to the window of what will surely be her ticket out of here. Wayland Corporation said that, listen, lady, you put in the time, you put in the credits, and now you can leave. And so she's getting her ticket out of here. There's a nice little planet off yonder where there's a sunset and a sunrise and it's not just cloudy and blackness all day long. You know, just a little place she can call her own. A little patch of dirt she can plant her flag and say, here I am world, look at me. But now she should probably keep that flag stored away for another day because she's not going anywhere. Wayland Corporation decided, you know what? The credit thing, that just doubled. Congratulations, Rain. You played yourself. You're not going anywhere. You, we, we own your ass forever. Just like your folks. Your dead parents that work to the bone on this planet. <coughs> Got the black lung paw. She's gonna get the same treatment. Timing is everything in this world. And for Rain, it managed to work out, I guess, in a sense, but in another sense, not really because of what she's gonna have to go through. But there's a decommissioned space station just above the planet, out of the range of the equipment that Wayland has on this place. L listen, they don't really go back to the Wayland planet ever again. The getting off of it and stuff is very, very easy. Almost arguably too easy. I could see that as being a plot hole or a problem for some. Because she meets up with a ragtag crew of kind of loser nobodies. Most of these actors are fine, but they're so stock one-dimensional that you just don't spend a lot of time with them. And I'm okay with that. I just really wanted to watch them die anyways by Xenomorphs, and thankfully most of them do. She and Andy board a ship with the no-name folks and they go to this decommissioned space station. It's not being monitored, the planet doesn't seem to care about it or the people flying there right now. Whatever, we'll just set that aside, not a big deal. They need Andy along because he's a synthetic and he can gain access to different doorways and rooms that they need access to. He just pops the finger in, does a little touch, invisible touch, Phil Collins opens the door. And it's really this point on that shit gets real because as they start going into different chambers, they're gonna find themselves eventually in a room that's full of face huggers. Some weird shit's been going on here, folks. And they're gonna be in the middle of it. This scene's awesome. These two bozos are in this room and these face huggers are popping out of their little glass cases, scampering around in the water, popping off sides of walls. Huh? Huh? Where's it at? Where's it at? He has this really stupid accent. I'm sorry, but it, it kind of annoyed me. I'm glad he died early enough so that I didn't have to listen to him talk. Something's in the water. 
Something's in the fucking water. <laughs> the other guy who I hated with the passion of a thousand sons, his only characteristic is that he hates synthetics. A synthetic had a trolley problem situation and there was people trapped. So he killed them in order to save a bunch of other people. And I hate synthetics now because of it, Govna. I threw the Govna in at the end there. I thought it would make me sound fancy. And Rain's like, mm-mm, mm-mm, not like this. Not like this, not my Andy. My Andy wouldn't do that. I don't have a bad Andy. I have a good Andy. And Andy's like, yes. All right, so these two dipshits are running around, flailing through this red room of death. Face huggers going at him. One of them gets sucked to his face and he's trying to like insert into the throat. It's like, ah, ah, ah. And speaking of that, this film was a lot more phallic. A lot more sexual than the other alien movies have been. I don't, I don't know if it was just me that thought that, but I'm thinking like, there's a lot of inserting into the mouth. Just the way these xenomorphs present themselves with their smooth, long, shafted heads. Could be just me. I don't know. But now it's the only way I can achieve climax. Here's the point where David Johnson goes from wimpy, Andy, lame android character who gets beat up on the streets by little passerbys to full-blown awesome badass. Because while the boys are being attacked, the others find a dead android on the ground. They take his chip, they put it into Andy, replacing the old one, which reboots the CPU and makes this guy freaking badass. He's stronger, faster, sharper, speaks differently because now it's a different operating system. Bro went from a PS1 to a PS5 instantly. He is unfortunately able to save these two gentlemen, but the face huggers get out as well. There's a bunch more action. It's all really awesome, especially an intense hallway scene where they're running and the door is going to close. Andy, without hesitating, pushes the final one while the rest of the crew is still a ways back, only barely able to get through. And Rain's like, you did that on purpose. What if he didn't make it? Andy's like, I'm still the same lovable Andy I was before. I calculated he would make it, no problem. A few things happen around this time. I apo A thousand apologies. I don't remember exactly the chronological order of things. I'm just trying to get the highlights out of the way here. But one of the chicks, Dora the Explorer actress, who was recently in Madam Web, so she's really done a glow up from that movie. It's revealed that she's pregnant. And I turned to my buddy when she said that and I go, hmm. I can't imagine this is going to come into play later on in the film. It does. After dropping that bombshell, and by the way, I'm going to refer to her as Pregos going forward, her friend, Baldy McBalderson, has something going on inside of her stomach. Her, there's a rumbly in her tumbly. So she takes one of these cool x-ray things out and she starts scanning around, realizes, oh shit, there's a little thing inside of me. Pulls it up to the chest and you hear the ribs cracking and <laughs> don't let me die. <laughs> don't let me die. Pregos is like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you let me die. That's a shame. One down, several to go. Chestburster gets out, runs away. That's going to be our big bad xenomorph for the film. But there's plenty more on this space station. While that's happening, Rain and company grab that synthetic they found earlier on the floor, pick him up, plug him in, and start asking questions. There's something familiar about this uh, synthetic. Something that I can't quite put my penis on. Sorry, I, I was watching Alien Romulus lately, so penis on the brain oh yeah it's ian home who's dead he died in 2020 and his character ash died in 1979 so how is he here well it's a different one obviously synthetics all kind of look alike depending on their model i can totally see people being pissed about this or getting annoyed at the fan servicey nature of it. it it's a kind of forced i guess but i honestly dug it even the weird deep fake stuff going on and the animatronics and all the, the combination of things they're using to make this guy come back to life. The surrealness is forgivable because he isn't supposed to be a real human. He is, after all, synthetic. And he's an asshole synthetic. He gives Andy a new directive. Previously, Andy's directive was to keep Rain safe. But now... It's to do what's ever in the best interest of Wayland. And what's in the best interest of Wayland, we're going to find out, is getting this super secret goo shit. 
that are in vials off of the planet so they can start populating a new species. This is revealed later in the film, but I'm just gonna do it now before I forget. By utilizing that black goo that the engineers had at the beginning of Prometheus, and by modifying it, combining it with other DNAs and a bunch of scientific mumbo jumbo, they have created a new compound, a new agent that when injected into a human can give them like new abilities, super senses, things of that nature, I guess. We find out that it doesn't actually work very well because there was a rat in a cage that was just completely bodied by this shit. Trials are still ongoing. At some point, the teams get fully separated. I think Pregos and Baldi and maybe one other dude get on the ship to go away from the station because she's pregnant or she's hurt. Honestly, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. They're separated. That's all that counts. And this turns out not to be the greatest plan because while Baldy McBalderson is throwing a fit and spazzing on the ground, kicks the lever which causes the ship to careen off course. It crashes through the hull of the station and they're back on board where they didn't want to be. Baldy is obviously gonzo. Pregos is crawling around. The other guy whose only characteristic is he hates synthetics, he's on the move as well. And this is where we're gonna get our first big reveal of the Xenomorph inside of its cocoon. Synthetic Hater, in his infinite wisdom, grabs a little electrical cow prod, a Xenomorph prod really, and sticks it inside of that sack, which looks like a vagina. Again, this movie's very just sexual across the board. It's palpable. He thinks he kills the thing, not realizing she's a spitter. And out comes a bunch of acid rain. <laughs> The dude dies by acid. Brutal stuff. It's at this moment Pregos realizes she is fucked. She tries to run as the Xenomorph reveals itself. She's knocking on the door where on the other side, Rain and Andy are at. And Andy's like, uh, listen, I'm not letting this bitch in. All right, the Xenomorph is right over there. He's gonna drop down. We all have seen this movie before. They're very smart creatures. So he lets her die. Or at least they think she's dead. She's not dead. And I was actually confused when this scene played out because I thought they took the time to say she was pregnant. They're not going to just kill her. No, no, no. They, they cocoon her and they put inside of her one of those lovely chest bursters. We're at the point of the movie where it jumps from alien to more of an aliens vibe because now we got the cool guns. They're on the hunt to try to get off of this fucking ship, which means they have to get up in an elevator shaft. But in order to get there, they have to go through a big alien nest. This scene's freaking awesome because there's a bunch of xenomorphs. They're all chasing them down. Rain's got this awesome machine gun with aim assist on. She put in the cheat code. So this thing's like... <laughs> She's just wasting these fuckers in zero G. They cut the gravity so these guys are floating around, their acid is spinning, la 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 la, cascading in circles, and they have to swim through it. This whole section is cool as shit. While this film visually is representative of the first film with the horror sci-fi vibes, it's not so much that with the xenomorph stalking its prey. There's only like one or two moments where it's jumping on the cage in the rain, very reminiscent of the first film with the chains and everything. I think there is actual chains in there too, because of course, of course there is. But now we're straight up aliens. These things are getting mowed down. They're chasing our team. Andy has fallen to the ground for like the 30th time, shaking convulsively. So she has to fix him by popping out the side of the neck and fiddling with the chip. I swear she does this eight times in the movie. At this point, I'm like, this is a bit much. Just cut your losses and let Andy die already. The Xenomorph takes out the pretty boy of the film, completely bodies him, pulls him up into the nest with the other ones. And she and Andy manage to, I don't really know how, give these guys the slip, get into the elevator shaft, and they start pulling themselves up in the zero G environment. Of course, time is of the essence. Boom, gravity kicks back in. Xenomorphs are coming after them. One of them actually catches her in a free fall. I thought for sure that tail was going through her stomach, but then I was like, no, she's the Ripley of the film. They're not gonna kill her and take that chance. Instead, he catches her. He's like, I got you, boo. I was a little confused. Like, is this like a good, a good Xenomorph? We have good ones now, but no. A face hugger peekaboos from around the corner. He's gonna just let that fucker take off into her. She's a perfect vessel for its seed. And after they just wiped out a whole bunch of them, yeah, they need more. Fortunately for Rain, 
right time, right place, that elevator drops back down, decimates the xenomorph, and she's able to get out of that shaft alive. It seems like everything is going to work out all right. This film is about to wrap up. No, it's not. Before they got out of the elevator shaft, they were able to rescue Pregos. She got on the ship ahead of them. And now the three of them are about to take off when, oh shit, why, she's suddenly pregnant? Why is, why is the baby coming already? She wasn't that far along. Well, she injected herself with the goo because she was like fucking dying. That sped up the pregnancy and it also brought life to a brand new little baby boy inside. Not the one that she was probably planning on having. Here's where we jump to complete alien horror show. As the bun in her oven is actually an egg. This thing comes out like... Like a ghost trap. This thing opens up. And out comes a freak of nature unlike any I've seen before. This disgusting, deformed, human-alien hybrid has the face reminiscent of the engineer from Prometheus and the body of nightmares. And this baby's crabby. This entire section is insane. Everybody audibly gasped in the theater when this fucker revealed itself. <gasps> oh my stars! Oh, that's so unnatural! That was from me. And now we have our Ripley moment. Ash is out of commission. I can't remember how. He's just shaking again on the floor. Probably got taken out by the creature. Mama, uh, Pregos, she gets face sucked by the second mouth that this creature has. Just disgusting. And she's out for the count as well. So it's really just Ripley Jr. left. She puts on a space suit at one point. She hooks herself up. She drops the payload. The creature drops with her. Gets sucked out of the floor into the vacuum of space. She's hanging outside. <sighs> Keep in mind, they are going to crash on a planet in like 10 seconds. So she's hanging out there. The ship is going to crash any second. She pulls herself up. But not before there's one final fuck you scare. And this one jumped me. This one got me out of my seats. It's like, zzz, peek a ah! Then it gets a little fake with the CG on the face as it's getting ripped up. But it doesn't matter. The jump scare worked. Well done. She gets into the ship and thankfully is able to bring Andy back to life for the 30th time. And that's how we end this. They fly off, charting a course for Planet Unknown. Hoping to settle down, maybe have a couple xenomorph kids of their own someday. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows where it goes from here? All I know is it was a hell of a ride. Oh shit, I did forget one thing that was so cringe-inducing. I almost had to leave for five seconds to catch myself. At one point, Andy kills or just punches or something to a creature. And he says the line from Aliens. Get away from her, you. B -b bitch I said the line, bad. That was just bad. But overall, love this film. Had a blast with it. I'm actually gonna go again with my family, my uh, my 12 year old son and my 15 year old daughter and my wife. We are all big alien fans. They've seen most of them. And I'm gonna go back to this one again to see how well it holds up on a second viewing. But I have a feeling I'm gonna enjoy it just as much. I wanna hear from you though. This video is getting long. Leave a comment below. Did I miss anything? Anything needs further explanation? Did you like it as I did? Please like the video if such. And if not, like, like the video anyway because I did a fine job. Please subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies. I post movie content every week. Would love to have you stick around. And hopefully, I catch you next time. Take care.